Hi, welcome to Community Focus here on Channel 6 TV. I'm Kenny Fogel, your host tonight. We're going to talk a little business tonight. And when we talk in business in Bardstown and Nelson County, I mean, you're mainly talking one business primarily. we got several, but primarily we're the bourbon capital of the world. We're going to talk bourbon. And with us today, we've got David Mandel. He's the president, or I'll let you tell, CEO of the Bardstown Bourbon Company. And that's the newest, biggest, best bourbon company in the world right now right thank you yes it's a pleasure to be here thank well, David, you David appreciate me. you being here and I guess before we get too far along we, uh, we we got a couple things we want to talk about uh, who's David Mandel I mean uh, what, what brings you to Bardstown what do you think about us well I'll tell you it's a wonderful community and I've been in Bardstown a little bit over it's actually approaching three years now mm -hmm. um, we have uh, purchased a property Rick McCubbin's old house downtown, yeah. and so and moved the whole family out here. I have a wife and three kids that have uh, just gone into the Bardstown school system, mm -hmm. and we came from Maryland, right outside of D.C. Oh, yeah. But I've spent a lot of time here as we've been developing this project and getting it up, and now was the time to bring the whole family out and plant some real roots here in well, Bardstown. Well, back in the 1800s, we had a huge migration from Maryland to Bardstown, so I guess you're, just, you're continuing <laughs> right. along that tradition. Well, Bardstown Bourbon Company, now we'll get into a little bit about uh, what it is in a few minutes, but you had a big announcement just in the last few days with the Constellation. Tell we us, did. what does that mean? Well, it means a lot for the company, so it means uh, having a strategic partner in one of the mm -hmm. largest wine and spirits companies in the world uh, buying a minority stake in the company, so having an interest in the company, uh, gives us the ability to continue to grow and ensures tremendous future growth for the company, which is you know, wonderful not only for us, but also for this community. Well, and you just said the word, the magic word, their minority stake. So basically that means Bar Barstown Bourbon Company it's still going to run the way it was originally intended to run, same board of directors, same, oh, absolutely. same mission. And, and so we wouldn't have it any other way. And so uh, the, the partnership with Constellation Ventures does not change the Bardstown uh -huh. Bourbon Company, uh, does not change the ownership of the Bardstown Bourbon Company, the way we operate. So um, we're a, you know, a small company. We uh, have a small privately owned ownership group. And of course, Constellation Ventures has joined us. And it's very exciting because it gives us the ability over time to really reach new levels and also gives and ensures that the company will always have a firm and strong financial standing. Well, obviously it's a big boost to, to you. I mean, when somebody comes in like this, so Constellation must see something in you yeah. that they want to be a part of well, as well. I think that's exactly right. I think more than anything else, what it does, and especially at such an early stage, it really validates what we have done out mm -hmm. there. And we have created a completely new concept and completely new model in the bourbon industry. And when I say, and I said when we announced it, that the Bardstown Bourbon Company is reshaping the whiskey landscape, that we really mean that. Mm -hmm. that is, uh, that's not just big talk. We really mean that. We've created a completely different model. And, and I'm happy to tell you, you know, share with you exactly how, you know, how we've done that. We, what we've done out there is we have built a destination experience. Mm -hmm. So we have 100 acres of active farmland. We're building a Napa Valley style destination experience, distillery. We have the ability for 10, 22 and a half thousand barrel rack houses out there. Plus phase two is boutique hotel and restaurant. But what is really unique beyond the brands that we will create ourselves, we developed a program called the Collaborative Distilling Program, where we are making custom production, custom whiskey for others in, in a way where they work and our customers work side by side with the incredible distilling team that we have put together. Mm -hmm. And they make Bardstown Bourbon Company their home. And within that home, we can showcase their brands. It gets incorporated into our experience because the Bardstown Bourbon Company is a celebration of the craft of making whiskey. No phony legends, no made up stories. You come to us and you get a really exciting and entertaining and trans, uh, you know, transparent view into how great whiskey is made. Uh -huh. So there's no, no ghost stories or anything out there, uh, <laughs> That's right. ghost of whiskey past. That's right. Well, basically, uh, so are we ready to go out there? What, what's going on right now? Well, there? Are, we, are we cooking already? We are at 100% capacity. Mm -hmm. So we have a one point, we have 1.5 million proof gallon capacity right now. We are at full capacity. We are running four shifts, 20 hours a day. Mm. And we have sold all of that capacity. So we have it all under contract with about 12 customers, which is, are great customers. Many of them will be announced over mm -hmm. the upcoming weeks and months. But we are, we're operating it at full steam. And what's so interesting about that, and I think such a testament to the team we have out there, is we very quickly brought on a tremendous team. We had Steve Nally, our master distiller, who was world-renowned. And then we went out 
and we knew we were going to be ramping up quickly, we hired a team, average whiskey, direct whiskey making experience is 15 years yeah. because we were going from zero to 100 right away. And I can tell you it has gone remarkably smoothly out there and this, the product that's coming out is exceptional. Now when we're talking to product, obviously there's a limited age got to be with it. So when are we looking to the products to actually hit the shelf? Well, you know, it, it's, a, it's a good question because our model is, is different. So for our products, you know, we're not going to take anything out of that distillery until it is fully ready. Mm -hmm. And there's one person that's going to decide that, and that's Steve Natley. When is that product ready? For our products. Yeah. We're patient, we're here, we're not rushing. In terms of our customers, that's up to them. Mm -hmm. So we make it for them, we store it for them, um, but they'll determine how they want to use it and when they want to use it. So that, that's a question for them. What, give us the little names we're going to be looking at when we go to the shelf. What, what kind of names are we going to be looking at? You're talking that? about for our customers well, or for ourselves? Your customers. Well, for me. If I walk yeah. into a liquor store, I want what I'm going to be looking for. Well, so in terms of the customers, the products that we're making for others, we'll be announcing those folks oh, over okay. the next so week. We're not so ready to make that. <laughs> so that's, that's a joint decision between them and us in terms uh, of when they want us to tell the world. Because we're opening our visitors' experience in, it'll probably be second quarter, beginning of second quarter next year. Yeah. And so that's at the, it's at that time we're really going to be sharing with folks and leading up to that who we're, who we're making. Now we talk about this visitor's experience. Now let's just talk a little bit. You got a, I mean, a convention type mm -hmm. room. Or what, what all is going to be involved? Well, so in it's that? A beautiful. When you walk in the uh, in the visitor's center of the Bardstown Bourbon Company, what you see is a very modern, really modern approach. Mm -hmm. And what we have in there is we're building one of the largest whiskey libraries in the state of uh, Kentucky. Huge whiskey bar. We have two beautiful glass classrooms that overlook uh, the entire visitor center. We have a full restaurant capability cafe. We have the ability in there to do a wedding up to 200 people. We have a massive grand, lo grand lawn out front. So this is far and beyond just the bourbon experience. Oh no, you have, we have a huge uh, wraparound patio with fire pits. You're gonna be able to come here, yeah. experience whiskey, learn about whiskey, enjoy whiskey, and really be able to add that in with culinary aspects. Uh -huh. So when you think about tours, we don't do tours. People say to me, well, when, is your, when are you going to have tours? We don't have tours. We'll create experiences. Yeah. And so it's not walk through, learn about the history of bourbon, get a free taste, and leave. <laughs> that's not us. Yeah. And that's fine for lots of places that have well-established brands. For yeah. us, what we saw is this market come in, really get immersed in it, really be able to enjoy it. Now, you're going to pay for it, yeah. right? This is a high-end experience, but we want to cater to that part of the market that is really looking for something different and for looking for something that's educational and entertaining. Has the bourbon world changed in the last 100, 100 years or so? I mean, as far as, when I, when I say that, yeah. the clientele, the people that are, are they looking for a different, as you say, experience, a different taste, a different what? You know, I can only talk from my own experience and what I've seen over the last several years. And certainly, I think what you see is, you're certainly a movement towards people that want to really learn about the products. They want to understand where their product comes from. They really want to, um, they want to know how to work with it. How do I make great cocktails? How do I cook with it? How do these elements you know, go together? There's a lot of interest. So that really plays into what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Whereas it's, when I say no phony stories or myths, the story of where it came from is not, for many people, is not as interesting as how did, how did you make your product? Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of that behind the craft movement. And so what makes the craft movement so exciting, we've got a lot of that built into what we're doing. Now we're big, mm -hmm. but we're gonna be producing for a lot of craft distilleries. And we've got many craft distillery partners in our collaborative distilling program where they can come to us, work side by side with our team, yeah. make their product, have it from Kentucky, and they're, they don't have to put out the capital expenditure of, try, of trying to do it themselves, because yeah. it's expensive. And it's also hard to scale. Yeah. And be able to do it, uh, and be able to do it consistently with a high quality. Well, I noticed in the movies and TV in the last few years, used to you'd hear different references, but now you're hearing the word bourbon every now and then, it, or actually more and more. So bourbon is actually becoming a trend, I, th I think, oh, worldwide. And uh, and so we, the future looks pretty good. We all think so. I mean, you know, everybody has their own predictions. We're certainly investing in it, um, and you know, and I think that if you look at how uh, the other companies and that many of the other large companies are approaching it they're all expanding. They're yeah. all building additional capacity. So everybody believes that that growth is there. I think we haven't even scratched the growth internationally yet. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a long way to go. You know, will these, will the industry and the market have cycles like it's had in the past? I'm, I'm sure it will, but okay. you know, bourbon is going to be here and we've built this company to be here a hundred years and we build it in the community 
that we are very, very proud to be in. Well, with this constellation arrangement now, I'm sure that will probably expand you into markets that you maybe not, not had already planned on or maybe had planned on but not ready to go into. I think that's right. And I think, you know, when you get to the point of having your own brand and having your brand out there, mm -hmm. you know, having a partner that has the ability to um, really push through in distribution and expand. You know, we've, I had a vodka company in the, in the early 2000s, and one of the hardest things to do in the industry is to build a brand yeah. because it takes a tremendous amount of capital. There's so much competition. You know, when you think of it, when you go into a bar and look at that back bar, imagine every one of the owners of those brands in the bar at the same time competing <laughs> for the customer's attention yeah, with all the money that's in there. And so that's, that is the fight. It's mm. by, bar by bar, bottle by bottle, distributor by distributor. And really, if you have a strategic partner, that's one way to really help break through a lot mm. of that. Many people get into, this, brand, into, the, into the spirits business thinking, I just come up with a great brand, it's gonna get out there, it's gonna catch on fire, and I'm gonna go. You can lose a tremendous amount of money doing it that way. Well, like you said, I think the first smart move you made hiring Steve Nally because you know the quality is going to be good. I absolutely. mean, there, there would be no question That's about right. that. So, and a beautiful, I mean, it's absolutely a beautiful place. You've been driving right down, driving down the Bluegrass Parkway. It's, you, you look, I mean, it's a great addition well, to, the, to the community. And I'll tell you, in addition to some of the great things that we did, I think the next great thing that we did was we brought in Busick Construction. Uh -huh. And Busick has done a tremendous job building this facility. As we look around the country, and we look at other distillery projects and those that have gone over time, over budget, with huge numbers. We brought this project in, beautiful facility, on time, mm -hmm. on budget, and Busick, we handpicked with Busick the great engineers and folks under us. We've got David Dones on electrical, you know, Pete Kamer, Lions Group, and these folks, small team, we managed it carefully, we made quick decisions, and we've got a group that has seen everything with Steve Nally has seen everything that's out there. Yeah. And when we say, oh, we want to do this, they say, well, we want to do it that way. They tried it down here like this, do it this way. Make the decision, go, don't get delayed. And the process has worked out. Well, like I said, you're hiring a lot of local people and farmers. I mean, people don't realize, and I've seen a lot of cornfields going down the last few weeks, and I have a feeling a lot of those cornfields may be heading in your direction. So we're buying, our preference is, and our approach is to do everything local first, mm -hmm. and we're doing, we're trying to do that with every service that we have in the distillery. Mm -hmm. We first start with the community. If we can find it in the community, we go with the community. Uh, and so in terms of grain, we're buying everything locally. There's certain things you can't sure. buy, sure. rye, you know, it's traditionally coming from Canada and from yeah. Europe. Yeah. Um, so, and then our customers may have their own, where they want to bring, you right. know, certain specialty grains in from. But our primary focus is, if we're, we're having corn and we're making it, or even with some of our customers, that's coming local. Well, I can see, like I said, just you sitting here, I can see the enthusiasm and the excitement. <laughs> so that means something right there. You're awful proud of what you're doing. Extremely. So, so uh, again, uh, we do appreciate you being here. And, and, and hopefully you have a few announcements coming up here soon. Come yeah. back and let us know. We will absolutely do that. And I would just close by saying that, you know, we would really just want to thank Bardstown, the community, the leadership, the political leadership, because they not only attracted us, they have kept us here, and um, they have been a pleasure to work with. And we're just very excited to keep working here well, in the David, community. David, we do appreciate you being here with 